Good morning, this is Jason Dean live, coming at you live from Film Fanatic headquarters. Hope everyone's doing good. It is a nice Saturday morning around 11 o'clock. Pretty chilly out, but it is December. We're approaching Christmas. We are in the Christmas season. Christmas time is coming. I'm uh, going to uh, to Bangor tonight to go see my really great friend, Tom Luther, who I've talked about before in related to the world of uh, my electronic group, Quantum. He's, uh, he's one, of, one of my great friends, but he's also, I look, I look up to him in a lot of ways, especially music, in, in terms of music. I had the fortunate experience with him in the past where I've played lots of music with Tom uh, over the years in various bands, mostly original projects that he was the leader of. And the later part of his, uh, like the, within the last five or six years, he's kind of moved more into creating lots of electronic music. And his newest, uh, newest project, or more recent projects, Fear Music, it's just really incredible stuff. It's um, very ambient inspired, very atmospheric, very, I feel, uh, soundtrack driven from films. We've done a couple of shows together with both of our bands. We did a, uh, a show, the first one, Tom's put together this electronic music festival at the Poor Farm last year and it was a three-day event and he got uh, quantum to uh to be part of it and we played on it was like on a thursday friday saturday and we played on that saturday and then he had headlined the whole show or festival uh that saturday and i believe we played that friday so that was a gig for us where it was kind of a, I don't know, a pivotal thing to a degree, even though it's, you know, on a, on, on a small level. It, for me, it was a pivotal thing. That was our first gig back as Quantum in, in a very long time. And that summer in particular, I was, you know, the year before, we didn't play any shows at all. So we had about a year and a half of immense downtime. But in that, in, during that period, I was able to write, I wrote a lot of music which was cool. And so we accumulated a lot of quantum material. And then Mike and I, Mike Whitehead, who plays bass in the band, we started to rehearse and, and we started slowly working on, working on all of this new material. And it was a lot of new tunes and it was over the course during the pandemic. Majority of the music was probably written and there was also music before. So over a period of about a year and a half, there was quite a, uh, quite a few uh, new tunes. So we started rehearsing, hashing the things out. And I had the intentions of, you know, maybe playing some shows that summer. Not going full bore. We're still, you know, we're still uh, in a trepidatious kind of area. So we're just kind of, you know, putting our feelers out there. But I had the intentions of playing some shows. And, you know, usually it's summertime. It's the time to try to, like, book a lot of things. There's a lot more opportunities. There, there's there's quite a few opportunities you're around here. There seems to be a little bit more of that with each passing year, which is cool, which is great and cool. So, but that year, that summer, I slowly kind of got back into trying to book things. And then Tom had asked us to play this festival. And it was really great. It was super fun. It was our first time playing at the Poor Farm. So we played that show and it was, you know, it was great to, to kind of be back and to, in the live setting and, you know, and basically we, you know, for that, for that one show, we kind of made the decision, Mike and I, to just, you know, let's just play all new stuff and just see how things go. I always feel for me, I always feel the live setting is where it's at as far as being able to test run and test out the material to see if it carries any any weight to it or if it you know can can connect with people or connect with with you in that setting. 
and for me, it's like the ultimate testing ground. And it's also a lot of fun and it's a lot of work, but it's also the, the ultimate testing ground to see if, you know, the material actually has some meaning behind it. So after we did that show, and it was really you know, great to, you know, really dust off the cobwebs, later on that summer, we ended up playing quite a few shows that we were asked to do. We ended up playing a, quite, a, quite a bit of shows that, that year, and then that led to us playing all the way up into December of that year, and then we ended up recording the album, or albums, In Dreams I Saw, Chapter One, which came out this year in June. And then the following summer, this past summer, we had a new album ready to go, or two albums new, uh, two albums ready to go. So we started, we had a, an album release show, and then I went pretty hard into getting back into the headspace of like booking gigs, especially around the promotion of the new album. And one of the shows that we did was with Tom Luther and his project Sphere Music. And we, we did a, a double build show at the Poor Farm, the same place that we had done that festival and it was awesome and we had a ton of people i've been to the poor farm a bunch of times it's a really awesome uh, beer brewery right in union maine it's a beautiful location they have this beautiful deck outside where they typically have the music they also have film events they have various other things that that do happen but they do concentrate on having lots of music event especially like um original based stuff so Tom and I did this, and I, so I've been there a bunch of times, and, and it was it was pretty awesome because I was surprised by, there were so many people there. It was the most people I'd ever seen there. And, you know, considering this, the stuff that we do and also what, what Tom does, it's electronic music. And obviously that that has, a, you know, an audience. People are attracted to that stuff, particularly, you know, younger people. But it's also, you know, there isn't a... You know, at that time, there's uh, there's more people now that I know of and that I'm in much more contact with that are doing similar styles, which is really great. And I'm looking forward to trying to utilize that and capitalize that on that moving forward. And plus, our music is, you know, it both of our groups. You couldn't, I, I wouldn't consider it to to be called like I wouldn't call it like EDM music which is kind of well kind of it's the trendy term but it's not you know accessible pop dance music like you know in the style of David Guada who is a real famous DJ but he crossed over and started working with a lot of pop stars like Alicia Keys so it gave birth to this kind of whole EDM thing and it's a pop version of techno or house music some of that music I like but it's very commercial I'm not really part of that scene i'm not you know i'm not really into into it overall i like the old school stuff the more underground stuff and there's elements of our band quantum and also what what tom does where it's definitely fringe you know that it crosses it's can be a little bit darker can be dissonant really atmospheric it's not necessarily all dance music it's not necessarily all party music it has different elements to it so that was another really great surprise with that show, with with how it went, because we were playing this kind of music, and you know, and it was felt like it was a really great success. So we're going to be doing another show together next month on Friday the thirteenth. It's going to be us, Quantum, and Tom Luther's group, Sphere Music. So I'm super excited about that. And anyway, tonight I was going to go to see Tom's project. Sphere music. They were going to be doing. He was going to be doing the music at this uh, planetarium in Bangor. I didn't get tickets. Found out this morning it was sold out, and then Tom got in touch with me, saying he could get us in. So I'm super excited about that. And we there will also be some more events coming up. We're working on doing some more shows with Quantum, where I'm going to try to bring in other artists, probably. In January, February, where we're going to be doing another build show at Ada's Kitchen. We did a really fun show in the fall or late summer with two other bands, Halsey and Method for Madness. That was a super fun time. So we're going to do some more shows like that at Ada's. Stay tuned for more dates around that. And there's also some other shows I'm, you know, in the midst now of putting together so stay tuned for that trying to keep the ball rolling so it'll be uh you know it'll, it'll be a good time and some things to look forward to 
during the you know middle of winter. And why thanks thank everybody again for checking out the channel, Film Fanatic. It's been great. It's been growing more and more. I just started the coverage of a new franchise. I'm more or less doing the the Alien movies, the Alien franchise. There are uh, about four movies that I'm leaving out just because I'm not a huge fan of those films. But so this show or shows is, is is mainly concentrated on Alien, which I did a video on. The the you know probably my favorite sci-fi horror movie movie of all time directed by Ridley Scott came out in 1979 just an amazing film I did a video about that to kick off this whole series and then I also did a I've been trying to mix the mix things up here on the channel with different videos and content and I've been doing these like specialty shows where I've been aside from just straight up reviews about movies and talking about music I've been trying to do some shows where I'm focusing on very particular things within within the film world. I did a show where I did coverage of all, uh, it was all about film composers that I really love and film scores, composers that I always go back to as an inspiration, particularly for my band Quantum. And that was great. That was a lot of fun. I just focused on basically the soundtrack world and really love that people check that video out. You know, it got over a thousand views. I did another show also where I did just a show on Stanley Kubrick, my favorite director of all time. And I just talked all about my favorite director, Stanley Kubrick. And that was a blast. I also did, I did a show which was about reviews film reviews or and also fan backlash basically it's centered on you know the history or the idea when certain movies come out and they're kind of lambasted by by film critics and then there's this incredible amount of fan backlash against those films and how sometimes those films over time come back and find an audience and become uh, cult sensations to a degree. So I did a show where I focused on that kind of thing. It was mostly centered on Halloween, Halloween ends. And then I also talked about other films, other horror films in the past that have gone through that same scenario without the, the use of, say, where social media is now. So there isn't quite that platform for people to be angry at, at things or angry at filmmakers or angry at films and I used examples like John Carpenter's The Thing and Stanley Kubrick's The Shining all both of those movies and also Halloween 3 Season of the Witch all of these films were box office failures by by leaps and bounds and didn't have an audience at all and there was fan backlash and they've gone on to become to be known as classics. So I looked at that kind of scenario and I kind of applied it to Halloween Ends, a movie that I actually really like. Not not a perfect movie, but I think there's some really great things about it. I'm looking forward to seeing it again. And the whole show was centered on I feel like that film is following the same trajectory as those other films that I mentioned. So I just talked about all those aspects and that was a that was a fun video to just kind of focus on that and again that that reached lots of viewers you know a few thousand people so and then yesterday be, being that this next and new video I'm doing right now is going to be centered on James Cameron's Aliens the sequel to Alien Ridley Scott's classic and there's we're also in the midst now of James Cameron is about to release Avatar Part 2, The Way of Water, which is opening next weekend. So I've been in the uh, in the world of James Cameron lately. So I did a show yesterday where I just talked about 
James Cameron, and also the interesting kind of history of his films, where he's kind of gone with his career. And then I've always seen lots of parallels between kind of his attitude or his way of how he operates. That's very similar, for me at least, to how George Lucas is, the director and creator of Star Wars. I feel like there's a lot of parallels between both of those guys and the way they kind of interact with their audience, the way they use technology, and kind of where their careers have gone, and the the mode of operation that I, f- I feel like that they uh, are steeped in. So I did a show on that, and that was really a lot of fun. And it was just focused on James Cameron. And appreciate, you know, lots of people checking out that video so far. So today's show, really excited about. This is going to be Aliens. This is the sequel to the original classic, classic movie, Alien from Ridley Scott. This came out, the original came out in 79. And this came out in 1986. It was directed by James Cameron. Amazing cast. Sigourney Weaver as Ellen Ripley. Carrie Henn. Michael Bean, who I'm a huge fan of. Just an amazing action star. He was in Terminator. Another amazing classic film by James Cameron. Bill Paxton. One of his most iconic roles. He unfortunately passed away about, I think it was five or six years ago. But this, I feel like, is definitely one of his, you know, classic, classic roles. Also, Lance Henriksen, he plays Bishop, one of my favorite character actors. He's been in so many great horror films over the years. One in particular, probably my favorite of his is Pumpkinhead. Love that movie. It's such an awesome kind of low-budget Stan Winston horror movie. Amazing effects. I'll probably do a show on Pumpkinhead at some point. I do have that on Blu-ray, and I love that movie to death. Jeanette Goldstein played Vasquez. Amazing. Paul Reiser, the the, uh, the comedian Matt from Mad About You, plays Carter Burke. And he plays such a sinister, uh, nefarious character in Aliens. It's just so great. So great. And I have a long, long history with Aliens. Aliens was probably... It came out in 1986, and I believe... When I think back to when I was a kid, and when I was a kid, I used to go out to the movies. It was like a family thing that we used to do growing up. We used to always go, I think pretty much every weekend, we would go to the movies. My mom and dad, and then my brother and sister who lived with us, they they moved out early, but during that time, they were like, we were all living together for, well, for a few years. But it was a regular kind of weekend ritual where we would all like pile into the car and we would go to the movies and we would go to, uh, you know, to, I grew up in New York and we would go to the Nanuet movie theater, which was about 20 minutes away or so. And we would go to movies and typically after the movies, we would, uh, my folks, we, we, we'd go to friendlies afterwards and like get, I'd always get a giant Sunday and just pick out. And it was a fun it was a fun thing. We did it all the time. <clears throat> My two earliest <clears throat> recollections of movies that I saw in the film. And again, I was super, super young. I was about eleven, ten or eleven years old. I believe the first movie I saw, and I was probably like seven or eight, maybe a little bit younger. But I remember seeing Return of the Jedi, Return of the Jedi from the Star Wars movie, and then also Aliens. I got uh, bit by the Star Wars bug early, early on. Became totally obsessed with Star Wars after seeing that movie, and that led to me, you know, become becoming an obsessed, you know, fanboy for Star Wars at a, at a young age, buying all the toys and all those things. But the first like horror movie I remember seeing was that my I remember my parents I had seen I knew what Alien was at that young age. I think I had even seen it a couple times. My both my mom and dad, I you know, my mom was a guest on on the show which was funny 
uh, a super fun show, and it was also hilarious. But she was a guest on the show, and she was the main person who kind of got me into movies and in, into she got me into horror films. And I know both of my parents loved the first Ridley Scott movie, Alien, and I could I kind of remembered it i you know it was i was really young virtually a, a baby and i remember seeing you know clips of it and seeing it on television like in the early 80s like 82 83 because it was on cable for a long time and then i think my parents had rented it a couple times on vhs and i remember watching it with them but they were excited i remember they 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 we went out as a family my parents took me to see aliens and that movie traumatized me. It was that was the first horror movie I saw in the theater, and it just scared the bejesus out of me. It gave me nightmares for like weeks. I was and so on one hand that started my love of horror films, and it had this thing of like you know going on a roller coaster ride. On one hand I was completely terrified, but on the other hand I was it was totally it was it was a completely exhilarating experience. So that's what, that's what I look at when people, whenever it comes up and people ask like, what's your, you know, what's your attraction to horror or like, what, what is it that, that does that for you? And to me, it's, it's like the amusement park or amusement ride scenario where on one hand you're, you're, you know, terrified and you're scared and you feel alive when you're, you know, you're getting that sensation. But on the other hand, you're also Put in thrust, you're, you're thrust, thrusted into this totally like escapist world, and it's 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 just you know flat out th- uh, like a, a completely thrilling experience, and it's completely fun. So it's like the combination of both of those things. I look at it as just like an amusement ride. You're screaming, but you're having a good time at the same time. It's all that kind of thing. So that. Aliens was the first movie I remember seeing. And, you know, I think now in this day and age, I think most parents probably would not let their kids go see Aliens in the theater. Because I think now, I just finished watching it again for the bazillionth time last night. It's a terrifying movie. It's an it's more... I love how different it is from Alien. And I love what James Cameron did. I For me, for my... For my taste and in my world, I f- Aliens is probably my favorite movie he's ever directed. I mean, he's done some really great films. I mean, there's Terminator. I mean, a classic movie. Uh, you know, he's done so many great movies. But Terminator Two is okay. I thought I thought it was okay, but. pretty mixed I've always had pretty mixed feelings about Terminator 2 but the first one is just you know just an incredible movie I always I've always loved The Abyss I've always thought that's a really great movie you know he's he has a pretty great or pretty he had a pretty awesome track record when he was younger The Abyss was a film that I saw many times as a kid I, I do love that movie he also did a movie with Jamie Lee Curtis True Lies most famously, or at that time was the most famous or the biggest film in, in, in box office history, Titanic. And then obviously Avatar, which is the biggest grossing movie of all time, still holds on to that title. And with the, you know, we're on the eve of the next one. But I'm I'm not uh, a huge fan of his later work. I, I love, Aliens is my favorite. I just think it's, just in a masterpiece i think it's probably there there are a lot of great you know you look through films uh, film history where there's like sequels or trilogies i think aliens for for my money is probably probably overall the greatest like sequel ever made in film history it's so great because it it pays tribute to what to the magic that ridley scott created but it gives you so much more and it's it's a it's kind of what you wanted to see you want to see the aliens have you know a little bit of an ass kicking and it's a war movie and so that it's 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 got that creepy atmosphere of the first one but it also has all this amazing gunplay and action and and yet it still has that atmosphere 
and so like Terminator, you know, that's I love that movie. I'll eventually do a show on that. I just think that's just such an amazing film. And The Abyss and Aliens are probably my favorite. I'm not a huge fan. Titanic's okay, I think. Avatar, I like. I actually like Titanic more in some ways. I'm gonna. I'm in the process since I've been, since I did the show on James Cameron. I'm gonna, you know, watch Avatar again, and you know, give it another spin. I'll probably see wait, uh, the the new the new Avatar. Uh, next week at some point, but we'll see. Not a huge fan of that movie. I I did talk about that film where I kind of felt. You know, there's there are some things about that film that are really great. Some of the action, visual things about it, but the storyline is is really unoriginal. It's Pocahontas and Dances with Wolves in Space. So, but Aliens is just such an amazing film. My one of my favorite scenes in that movie is when Sigourney Weaver's character Ripley decides to to go back to the colony where all of this craziness happened and basically her whole her whole crew was you know wiped out so it takes on this revenge kind of thing and she's added to be this member in this on this military outing that's going to be she's going to act as a as a like an advisor and she's going in with like these these like full on you know hardcore marines that have like all this firepower and all all of this stuff but there's this whole scene where, where they go back, the Marines and, and Ripley, they all go to the planet where the colony was was created. And the signal has been lost and they they feel that maybe all of these colonists have been killed or wiped out by the aliens. But there's a scene where they're landing on, the, on this planet and on the colony and it's raining and the atmosphere is just so amazing and when they get out of the the drop zone and their ship and their and their this tank thing goes up to the compound to where the these people are living it's just this atmosphere with the rain and, and it's super dark and the landscape and it's just there's so much tension i i as much as i love the entire movie and and again it's just it's i I've, I've seen interviews there's a really great interview or kind of kickoff with James Cameron on this film where he talks about he looks at this film as being, you know, 40 miles of bad road, you know, just it's just, you know, it's intense. It's a complete thrill ride the entire time. And as much as I love the entire film, that scene, that that sequence, and it's only about, I don't know, five or ten minutes is like my probably my favorite sequence. It's just, it just, uh, you're just, it just pulls you so into the story and the atmosphere. And there's no real dialogue. It's just all this buildup. And the amazing thing is, too, which I always forget about this film, is you don't see the aliens. The movie is cl- clocks into uh, about two and a half hours. And you don't see any aliens until about almost an hour and a half into the film. Like, that's amazing. I was... When I watched it, and again, I've seen this movie a thousand times, but when I watched it again the other night, and I was keeping track of the time, I'm like, wow, I never really realized that on how this film is, is just, it's it's all centered on the atmosphere, the the build-up, the character study, and you're getting all this information as to where this movie's going, but there's no aliens, there's no actual action yet, and, and yet you're just glued to the screen and when when it finally does happen and and you do see the aliens and they're engaged in combat with the soldiers it's just so amazing and just such a great payoff and again it ta- it brings back that other point that I've brought up before in other previous videos kind of goes into the whole like less is more thing like it, it's about the build up and it's about you know bringing in the audience and you get you're getting just enough information to where you're you know you're you're invested in it and you care about all the characters that are that you're watching and that you're seeing and you care to you know and you care enough to to know what's going to happen you're invested in it so when things do happen 
it's it's that much more intense. And this movie is such a, an exemplar of that. Just just impeccable. Though the the rest of the films, like this, will be the last film I'm, I'm going to do in the franchise. The rest of the films are pretty bad and pretty forgettable. The one film I think that I have seen, which is kind of its own thing, even though it's a separate thing. The only movie I think is has some pretty redeeming qualities to it. I, Alien 3, obviously, I've talked about that. It, it's the debut uh, of uh, a really wonderful director. Of course, David Fincher. The movie itself is pretty flawed, though. But it's it's watchable. I think there are things about it that are really great, particularly if you're a David Fincher fan. I definitely suggest people check out that movie because that was his debut. So if you're a fan of his films, that you you can really see his style in that movie at times. The rest of the movies are not so great, but um, but I just yeah, and I got this box set. I again, Aliens. I have multiple copies of this on on DVD and also Blu-ray. I got this box set actually um, about two years ago, and I feel like this is the definitive version. This is a Blu-ray version. And it comes with this amazing booklet, uh, amazing artwork. It's just such a great package. It comes with this amazing like comic book. It's a really great like hard box cover. It's just so cool. Um, and the animation, uh, the artwork on this uh, on on this package is spectacular. I mean, just so cool. And again, like I said, I have multiple copies of this on DVD. I've seen this movie a bazillion times. I can't even remember. But again, just like Aliens, or just like Alien, Ridley Scott's version, the director's cut is the way to go. There is a director's cut also for this film where there are about, I think it's roughly about 10 to 15 minutes that are cut out of this film also, as well as the first one. And I've seen both versions, the theatrical versions, many times, multiple, multiple times for Alien and Aliens. But with the last seven to ten years, when I when I bought these director's cuts, that's now those versions, the director's cuts, are the only ones I watch. Especially Alien, that has quite a few extra sequences, about fifteen to twenty minutes of of scenes that were cut out. And I just feel like, think that that version is superior. Aliens, there is less, there there was less material cut out, but there are scenes of where they show the colony and they show the people on the in the colony living and and doing what they do, and they also show a few scenes of where the the colonists are attacked by these aliens. That was all cut out of the original. But again, I love the director's cut more than the theatrical version. Both of the both editions are really great because they have these introductions with Ridley Scott that's really short, but it's it's really interesting, and also James Cameron, where they talked about at the end of the day, after all of these years have gone by, you know, they you know, they assembled these newer versions and both of these versions came out for both films, the director's cuts came out in two thousand and seven, I believe. So it was many, many years later that they reassembled and added footage to their films. I don't believe they ever got a theatrical release, which would have been ridiculously, uh, just amazing, would have been just so ridiculously amazing. But I don't believe they they got a theatrical release. They were both put out on DVD and, and then Blu-ray. And just superior, superior in every way. I, I definitely suggest, if you're a fan of these movies, the director's cut, cuts are the way to go uh, just a more immersive experience this edition on blu-ray too like the, the the quality the picture the sound it's all t it's all thx mastered it's just incredible thx was the company that was started by george lucas where they basically got into you know digitally remastering all of the films especially on, on dvd and also blu-ray thx was also taken a name taken from 
George uh, George Lucas's first movie, which is just an amazing dystopian sci-fi movie, which I'll eventually review. So the the picture, the the quality, the sound for for this in both editions is just spectacular. This is the best. I feel like the definitive version of the film, and my own personal favorite of of watching these films and this film is watching it with these special special edition cuts just so amazing the next thing i'm going to be doing as far as the alien goes because this will be the last like technical movie i'll, I'll be talking about technically it will be the last movie for the series so the next thing i'm going to be doing there's a there's a collection i have the box set the alien box set originally that came out in the early 2000s and it was it's i it's all dvds and it has all of the films minus prometheus that was one movie i started to talk about that was a movie i thought is okay it's a not it's it's a it's its own separate thing i've seen it a couple times it was directed by ridley scott it came out about 10 years ago that's an okay movie but i don't think I've grown to like it and appreciate it a little bit more, but I don't think I'm going to review it. But anyway, so I have this set that I bought quite a few years ago, and it's called the Quadrology. And it's basically all four original Alien movies in, in this DVD box set. Since then, I've obviously bought the two movies I love the most. I've bought them on Blu-ray, and I'm much happier with those as far as the quality. But the thing that's amazing about the Quadrology set is there are a series of, there's about 10 hours of documentaries on it about each movie. And it is, I'm a huge fan of special features. I love interviews. If, if there's a movie I love or a director I love or even a genre of, of filmmaking that I really love, I love to, to read about it and to take a deep dive into finding out as much information about that process. A lot of the times when I seek out Blu-rays, now I'll try to only buy them with great bonus features. The Quadrology for the Alien box set is by far, I, I feel for my money, the greatest special features package I've ever seen. It goes into such detail of each movie that it's just it's incredible it's incredible and again i can't i did forget to mention in the first show but you can't forget hr Giger, who was the the artist who created the whole alien basically the whole he famously wrote the necronomicon which was an art book that where he essentially created these a kind of alien xenomorph creatures and he was used as a consultant and a creator for the Alien film. So he created what, you, what you're seeing on the big screen. Just amazing. So the next show, I'm going to just focus on the quadrology and just talk about those documentaries because it's amazing. The ones I really like almost more are the ones for, like I'm not a big fan of the films, Alien 3 and Alien Resurrection, especially Alien Resurrection. But there are the documentaries about those films are just so fascinating and so interesting. They're better than the movies, I think, because they really the the executives at Fox and and the filmmakers of the time and the actors in the, in the at the time go into such detail about how the film was made and how they feel the film that those films were failures and and there was all these false starts and and directors being people being fired and people being brought in and it's really amazing to see how you know these these folks that were at fox and the, the filmmakers for these for the later movies how just how candid they are and honest about what they felt were the you know the reasons that these films were not successful and that they they kind of failed super fascinating but so stay tuned. That will be the next show, and that will be the conclusion to the whole like alien, you know, kind of series. So this is Jason Dean. Uh, hope you, everyone has a great weekend, and we will see you next time. Peace.